The White House is warning that a Russian attack on Ukraine could begin any day. After a huge buildup of Russian troops near the Ukrainian border, American officials say Moscow now has the capability to conduct a major military operation, possibly beginning with an air assault. Ladies and gents, the date today is Thursday, 27th of January, and I've officially made my decision. I'm leaving the depot, it's about to kick off. Obviously, this video will be released quite far into the future when it's already happened, but this is the process and my experience of leaving a country in war <laughs> let's get into it so essentially um, I've just left the sport life gym um, where I've been training for the evening and got a piece of news and realized yeah I'm gonna make the decision to leave and ooh, the lift is a bit noisy <laughs> the lift is a bit noisy yeah, so we're out of the lift now, and as I was saying, I've gotten a piece of news and determined that the safest course of action is to leave Dnipro ASAP and let this cool down because the embassy people are saying that we're currently on amber alert in the moment, and if it goes to red, it means uh, danger, danger, danger. So that means um, stopping all flights and, you know, it's wartime, baby. <laughs> so obviously the best course and the safest course of action is to leave ASAP or as soon as I can. Obviously, we're still waiting for, um, yeah, obviously we're still waiting for a statement from Medlink, a statement from DMI, the uni, but, you know, time to make contingency plans. I was, you know, skeptical of this ever actually happening, you know, it was just Russia flexing their muscles. But it seems that uh, it's going down that way. So, you know, I never say I never thought I'd say this, but time to flee a country going into war. <laughs> yeah, so obviously this video is going to be recorded over a number of days, weeks and you know just to see what would happen but um yeah let's uh let's see what happens hopefully don't know when the next update will be if i think of something i'll be back but you know let's see what happens till next time day uh, and I can safely say that I have sorted out a storage place for the items that I'm gonna be leaving behind here um, yeah so it's a bit of a sticky one but you know hopefully I'll be able to keep the flat running um, and try and share this place out as a storage place but if that doesn't work we've got a contingency plan in place and hopefully to you know leave the country by the end of the week but we're still waiting on the official statement from the university and the student union so uh, we'll get on with that so I've just been sent the address of the storage place uh, and it's basically what it looks like is it's a flat of some sort so what I think is going on is the estate agent who's normally really friendly obviously he's out here to try and make a quick a quick buck you know a quick quick bit of green <laughs> but you know um 600 well 300 dollars for six months is not that bad um i've got the address so it makes it a bit easier to know where your stuff is uh need to get it all in writing and you know make sure none of it goes none of it goes missing hopefully it will hopefully it will um pan out okay yeah so hmm countdown to leaving I wonder how many days are left. I haven't really booked a ticket yet, but hypothetical countdown to leaving. 
10 days. Right guys, DMI has just officially released a statement uh, via email and it's uh, it's quite grim, <laughs> yeah, to say one thing. Obviously they can't advise you whether to go back or whether not to go back. You've got to, um, you've got to organize that with your teachers and how you're planning to, you know, do the required work. Most likely it will be going back to online studies how it was before Christmas. Um, not too big of a deal because it's uh, third year, uh, so it's preclinical. Uh, yeah, so that's that confirmed. Need to, you know, okay it with all the teachers, get my group sorted. Um, but yeah, so we'll we'll see how it goes and how the update progresses. What do you think about you know war in Ukraine? War. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, no, war. Uh, Russian, Russian, uh, Ukrainian. I don't think there will be war. No war. No war? No. Ah. Ah, my. Пошли в Англия. Вот здесь, здесь war. Ты сказал, ты сказал, ты ты сказал нет вор. Нет, нет, но потому что это, ну, 99 процентов, 99 процент нового. Russian Ukraine. Why? Ну потому что зачем? Не думаю, что будет война. Хорошо, хорошо. Это хорошо. Пусть не будет. Зачем? I'm going back to. England this fr this Friday, oh. this Friday I go back to England. Why? Because they say war, war. You know, everybody say war, war. <laughs> no, no, no. Uh, uh, so. Okay, ladies and gents. So. After looking past all the fear mongering and all the left, right and center craziness, panic and whatever, uh, I've decided to stay in Ukraine and see you know, how the situation goes for the next four weeks. As you saw by the clip that I've played beforehand, the taxi driver and a lot of the other Ukrainian people that I have interviewed and spoken to, they said that there's about a 99% chance of nothing happening. You know, it's just overblown you know media stuff um but yeah so we'll see what happens and the next update will come whenever something else changes this video is going to be interesting <laughs> Fresh and awoken, and although this video you will have seen loads of stress levels, you know, jumping up and down, something else has happened again. Sky News has released another feature, whatever, whatever, satellite imaging, yada yada, saying that there's more build up of uh, Russian forces all over the place. So we've got that stress going on. Ah, uh, it just does not seem to stop. But, you know, it's just one of these things. So, so mainly I take my views from the Ukrainian people themselves uh, and they don't seem to be stressed. And as they've lived through um, this situation for a lot longer than me, let's just put it that way. I'm, if they ain't stressed, then, you know, I'm just going to hurry up and wait, as they say. And we'll see where it goes from there. Obviously, I've got a new. Obviously, I've got a few other videos in the pipeline. Um, I'm just thinking of a few more ideas. But you know, when this video gets released, it will be a. <laughs> it will be an insight. Let's just put it that way. You know, into living with uh, the precedent of war <laughs> over my head. So you know, it's one of those ones. Uh, 
Я хочу еще раз все-таки подчеркнуть это. Я говорил, но мне очень бы хотелось, чтобы вы меня услышали все-таки в конце концов. И донесли это до своих читателей, зрителей и пользователей в интернете. Но вы понимаете или нет, что если Украина будет в НАТО и военным путем будет возвращать себе Крым, европейские страны автоматически будут втянуты в военный конфликт с Россией. Конечно, значит, потенциал объединенной организации НАТО и России несопоставим. Мы понимаем. Но мы даже и понимаем, что Россия одна из ведущих ядерных держав, но по некоторым компонентам по современности даже многих опережает. Победителей не будет. И вы окажетесь втянутыми в этот конфликт, помимо своей воли. И вы даже не успеете глазом моргнуть, когда будете исполнять пункт 5 Римского договора. Но господин президент, конечно, не хочет этого развития. И я не хочу. И я не хочу. Поэтому, поэтому он здесь и находится, и, и мучает меня уже 6 часов. Yeah, so basically the flight, uh, my flight is tomorrow. Uh, it's been pre-booked for about a week now. Uh, and literally it's the day before, well, the evening before my flight. And news has come out that Ukraine is officially on the red list, which means it's time to run. <laughs> it's time to leave. <laughs> Abandon ship, etc., etc. Um, yeah, it's... Time to get out of here, I guess. <laughs> oh dear, what a mess. Bags are packed, ready to go. Let's get out of here. Ladies and gentlemen, the time is now 5.30 in the morning. 
and we are officially leaving this place. <laughs> Flight is at 6.45, let's get down to the airport. Uh, Stutt is nice, by now. By now, is this? Da? Pipsi with the Pomerac. Это здесь э, не про безопасный война. Не хорошо? Чуть-чуть. Чуть-чуть. А. Okay. Just got through security and uh, ready for checking. So literally just landed at London Gatwick, uh, collected my ballot baggage and everything, uh, walked out <laughs> of departures and then got faced with a TV camera for some reason. Uh, I did, pff, I got asked a couple of questions and I was not expecting that as my uh, first experience back in the UK, but you know, with me. A student has just returned from Ukraine because of the threat of a Russian invasion with heightened tension in the region after the build-up of Russian troops at the border. All British citizens have been advised to leave the country as soon as possible. Haider Ali from Saltley had been in Ukraine studying medicine, but he returned home at the weekend. He's been telling me exactly how he made the decision to get out.